<laughs> Hello, my sewing friends. My name is Leah Day, and today I want to show you how to make Miss Bunny's panties so she's not running around naked. <laughs> so let's jump on the machine and learn how to sew this super simple doll garment together. So you can see I made a very simple set of elastic waist shorts. And this is super, super simple piecing. So first step is to grab your pattern and to cut out two pieces for this pair of panties. And you can find the pattern at mallythemaker.com slash bunny. That's where you can find it. Okay, we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna stitch a quarter inch seam allowance right around this crotch area. That's our first step. So here on my machine, I have a normal straight stitch, but I'm gonna change the position of that straight stitch. I'm gonna dial it over until it looks like about a quarter inch seam from the needle to the edge of the foot. And you, you're ever wondering how to check that? Just grab a ruler and drop your needle down and see where it's at. Looks like actually I need to dial this back one click at five millimeters, that's where my needle is at a quarter inch from the edge of this foot. And I'm also going to change my stitch length. I'm gonna dial that down to 1.5 millimeters. That produces a nice tight stitch. Okay, so now we're just gonna stitch right around this crotch seam and I'm just gonna leave the blue thread on I have on my machine already. Take a couple stitches forward, then back stitch and then go around this deep curve. And if you ever need to, just stop with your needle in the down position, lift the foot slightly, and that's gonna help you pivot around those curves. Just a few stitches forward at a time. And gentle pivoting as you go. Now I've written in the pattern to finish seams as desired. And you might be wondering what that means. So it's really entirely up to you how you wanna finish the seams. You can zigzag, you can overlock. Uh, you can, if you have a serger, of course, serge the edges. That would be great. That would definitely be the easiest and fastest way to finish it. Uh, but I'm just gonna do a normal zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna stitch through my scrap charger. This just keeps my machine in stitching mode so I have less of these long thread tails that drive me crazy. And I'm gonna change my stitch to a six stitch, which is the zigzag. I'm going to change the zigzag width to, let's say three millimeters and dial my length down to 1.5 millimeters. And if you're ever curious about what that's gonna look like, just stitch through another scrap charger and, and see. If that still looks a little bit wide to you, dial it down one more number and get it down where you think it's gonna look best. And now I'm gonna load this in and I'm gonna try and stitch that zigzag as close to that first line of stitching as possible. I wanna reduce the chances that this is gonna fray. Like let's say your Miss Bunny just is a ragamuffin and she gets all dirty. <laughs> you need to throw her in the wash. I want you to be able to feel like you can do that without this becoming a frayed mess, you know, and a big wad of nasty thread. So that's why I like finishing these seams even though it is just simply for a doll. Okay, it's good to remember to back stitch. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's not a big deal if you don't, so don't worry about it. All right, I'm gonna keep on stitching down and clip off my scrap charger. And here you can see what that seam's gonna look like once you get it stitched. Now I'm just going to trim down the excess fabric that is extending beyond that zigzag stitch. I wanna be really careful not to clip through the zigzag. So I'm being really careful with my scissors here. I don't, want to, I don't want to clip that stitching, but I do want to remove as much of that extra fabric as possible because that's what would fray and turn into a big mess. There we go, that looks great. Okay, now the next step is to start our uh, elastic insertion. And this is super, super easy. Please don't be intimidated by it. The first step is to open up one of the legs. Because we stitched this crotch seam, we now have two different leg areas. So I'm gonna flatten out this one and turn it wrong side up. There we go. And now I'm gonna fold up that bottom edge a quarter inch. I'm just gonna eyeball this. A lot of times when I'm sewing dresses, I actually don't go to my iron. I just do everything by finger pressing. Just press firmly with my fingertips right at my sewing machine. And that just saves me a trip from having to get up and go grab my iron. Now I'm gonna roll that up one more time to fully encase that raw edge. 
So I just fold it at once and then I fold up one more time. And it's good to have that be nice and consistent, but I'll be honest, it's okay if it's not because this is gonna be kind of a ruched area with the elastic that goes in there. So even if this isn't absolutely perfect and you know one side's a little bit rolled up a little bit more than the other, that's not a big deal. I'm gonna switch back to my one stitch, my center straight stitch and dial my stitch length down to 1.5 millimeters. Whenever you change stitches, make sure to tap your foot a little bit just so you get your machine back into center position. And now I'm gonna line this up and I wanna stitch right along the edge of that fold. It's great if you have an edge stitching foot. You can always use that. That can help you stay right on the edge, but this is working fine. I'm just lining that up right with the center of that foot. I'm gonna stitch down to that seam and then pivot and kind of fiddle with the fabric a little bit right here. So it's a nice straight shot to the end. That looks good. If anything ever feels like it's kind of bunching up on you, just reach around the back and help guide it through the back of your machine. There we go, that looks great. Again, back stitch if you remember to, it really does help. Um, you're going to put a little bit more stress on this seam as we insert the zip, the uh, elastic. So it's really good to go on ahead and do that little bit of back stitching to reinforce it. Okay, that looks good. So you see we have a nice little finished hem. And if you don't like the idea of having elastic around that bottom leg, you can end it here. You don't have to insert the elastic if you don't want to. So let me show you how to do the elastic next. So I'm using quarter inch elastic and I've just placed this along my ruler and marked it at the three and a half inch mark. Now you don't wanna cut this because I found working with elastic, it's really tricky when you start working with a tiny short piece. It's much easier when you have a nice long piece to work with and then you can really force it into submission and get it to do what you want it to do. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just uh, threading that onto a nice big chunky tapestry needle and you want to feel and take a look at your panties on those leg seams and the seam is going to be pointing in a particular direction. You can see that's pointing that way. So that's the area it's kind of going from bulky to not so bulky. So I want to insert my needle going in that same direction. Now I have found this is tricky because of course the fabric is kind of slipping and sliding and the needle doesn't necessarily always want to pull through. It's really bulky back here. So I found the easiest thing is to go out to my <laughs> wood shop and grab my nice honking pair of pliers and grab a hold of the end of that tapestry needle and get really serious about it. So I'm gripping that hard and then I'm just wiggling that fabric back and forth until it goes over the eye of that needle and onto that elastic. And you just have to show it's who's boss <laughs> more than anything else. So you can see I'm just wiggling that back and forth. And if you, you know, there's, there's different uh, tools out there that I did find were easier, but you might not have them. They're not very common. They're more for doll making, like a ball pointed bodkin. I know that sounds like an odd tool, but I did find that worked a lot easier than a tapestry needle, but it's a lot less common and they're harder to find. So that's why I didn't call for it in the pattern. So there we go. I got my elastic through all the way and don't worry if it pulls itself off the needle, that's just fine. Now I'm gonna flatten this out. I want the elastic to be nice and smooth throughout and I'm just gonna give this a gentle tug until this end of the elastic is flush with that side of the leg. So just a gentle, gentle tug, kind of smooth it out when you get close to the end. Because what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna lose that. You don't wanna have it suck inside because otherwise you'll have to go stitch it again <laughs> or send it through again with a, your tapestry needle. Okay, so right now my elastic is lined up just perfectly right with that edge. I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm just gonna stitch over that end. I'm stitching the elastic in place really firmly. So I'm going to stitch forward and then I'm going to angle it a little bit and stitch backwards and angle it a little bit more 
and stitch forwards. I want to go through that several times and I've got a quarter inch seam allowance here so I want to kind of use that up. What you don't want to do is just stitch this one time and have it be uh, basically very weak. Um, you want it to be very strong because this is what the stitching is what is holding the elastic in place and we're about to put it under a lot of pressure and tension. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to take the other end of the elastic. So this is where I've stitched and secured it. It's nice and locked in place. Now I'm going to take the opposite side and I'm going to start ruching it up. I'm pulling that fabric over so it forms those nice ripples. And now I'm going to flip it over and look for my mark. That's my three and a half inch mark. So what I need to do, I've actually ruched it too far. I need to slide that fabric out and still tell the edge of this side matches up with that mark. So again, just a little bit of manipulation back and forth until that's lined up just exactly right. That looks good. So now I'm going to put this back on the machine and stitch that again, nice and reinforcing. You don't want this to come out. You want it to be locked in place. So stitch forward. Make sure that your zigs your, your backup stitch is actually wanting to work. <laughs> Every once in a while, mine will go on the fronts and be like, no, I don't want to do my job today. There we go. That looks good. And keep in mind, you're also going to stitch over that edge when you sew up the sides too. So there we go. Once you get that stitch, just even out the fabric along the edge of the elastic, just so that you have nice even ripples. And then you can trim off the edge of the elastic as well. Okay, so I've already done my uh, little encasing. Whenever you fold up the edge and fold it over, that creates a casing. So I'm going to take the time to do my opposite side, do the elastic on the opposite side, just the exact same way. And I'll meet you back here when we're ready to finish the waistline. So both legs are stitched and nicely ruched up. I think that looks great. And now you just need to pick one side or the other and stitch up that side seam. It doesn't matter which one you do, you just only stitch up one side. So I'm gonna, actually I think I'm gonna start up here on the waistline and stitch down. I think that might be an easier direction to go in. And again, quarter inch seam allowance. So I've moved my needle over and changed my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters. So it's producing a nice tight stitch. I'm gonna stitch all the way down. And down here where you have the elastic, just give it a little bit of a tug like this to smooth it out a little bit right around that edge. And that will make it just a little bit easier to control. Just like so. Now again, make sure to back stitch. That's really important. There we go. I'm going to stitch onto a scrap charger just to reduce those thread tails I have to deal with. There we go. And again, we're going to finish this seam as desired. So for me, that is a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to lower that stitch length to, let's do 2.5 millimeters and lower that length to 1.5 millimeters. And then just try and estimate and aim to stitch that zigzag right as close to that stitching as I possibly can get without stitching over it. It's just meant to finish off that edge nicely. And I will back stitch at the bottom and that'll finish that off. Just like with the crotch seam, I wanna trim this down just to remove the extra fabric that's gonna fray that extends beyond the edge of that zigzag stitching. There we go, that looks good. And now we're gonna do basically the exact same step that we did for the legs, only we're gonna do it with this long waistline edge. We're going to fold over that edge, fold it over to the wrong side by a quarter inch, and then fold it over again another quarter inch. And again, that creates that casing. It creates basically like a little tube right around the top of the panties, and that allows you to insert your elastic. So I'm just gonna go around, and again, I just finger press this. I very rarely, when I'm sewing these uh, garments for Miss Bunny, or even the Miss Bunny doll, I very rarely get up to go grab my iron and do almost everything through fingertip pressure. Uh, just finger pressing this over, and then finger pressing it over once more. 
making sure to fully encase that. And because it's an elastic waistband, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's off ever so slightly, if one side kind of slopes a little bit higher than the other, it's not the end of the world. Now, if you really wanna be fancy and make these panties have a right and wrong side and put a little tag in it, then you'll want to insert that in the middle of one of these on the back. So just like that, somewhere about right there. So kind of go up from the crotch seam, like fold it in half, and that's where you would insert your little tag. But that's, yeah, definitely being a little <laughs> going overboard. But I don't know, Miss Bunny kind of tends to make me want to go overboard for her. She's so sweet. All right, here we go. So I'm making that casing, just folding that over. And I've already changed my stitch length. I'm back to my one stitch and in the middle position and a stitch length of 1.5 millimeters. So there we go. Definitely backstitch at these seams. Yeah, just make sure to backstitch at those seams because as you pull the elastic through, it does tend to tweak that fabric right there at the beginning and end. Okay, so I am right here, just about in the middle of this pair of panties and I decided I would put a tag in. I just took a scrap piece of fabric and folded it to the inside just like so and then folded it in half. It doesn't have to be a big deal and just tuck it right in that seam just like so yeah it's <laughs> it's so silly i know but it's so much fun to put in little details like that uh, i have been working on a design of mally's uh pants some uh jean pants and i have been working on real working pockets and that is just again so much fun to make it real to make it actually work and there we go again i'll back stitch that seam Make sure it's nice and reinforced and stitch onto a scrap charger. There we go. Okay, yeah, you can see that's <laughs> just nicely finished. Okay, so we need one more piece of elastic and this is gonna be measured out eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna stretch this out on my ruler, find that eight and a half inch mark and mark it. And again, don't cut your elastic as you can see from our last step, really having that nice long piece of elastic was essential. So that's marked nicely and I'll grab my tapestry needle and just exactly the same way as before, I wanna check that seam in the center and make sure that whatever way that seam is pointing is the direction that I send my needle and my elastic. Now this is gonna be harder because this is such a, a bigger, wider seam. Uh, you know, it's a bigger area. So what I might do, and I wish I had some cleaner pliers, what I might do is grip the fabric like this. I'm gripping the needle through the fabric and then kind of pulling and tugging on that fabric to get it around the eye of the needle and get it started. There we go. And that just gripping it with the pliers stops the fabric from just slipping down the needle and going all loosey-goosey. It also helps if you tug on the elastic too, like that, that makes it skinnier. So then it'll slip over easier. Okay, yeah, I didn't make, I didn't make too much of a mark on my <laughs> white panty fabric. <laughs> All right, here we go. So again, slide it on down. It is kind of a bottleneck down here and the issue is just being able to tug on the elastic and hold the needle and grip everything nicely all at the same time. And I will be honest, I think a bald pointed bodkin does work better. It's a much longer tool. It has a very small little eye and it, um, and it has a ball point on the end and for some reason that helps guide things through too. So this is a bit of a process. It's not all that easy but it's also not impossible just be patient with it and you can see how what's happening here is it's just slipping so i'm going to try and wiggle i'm kind of pulling the needle down i'm going to back up a little bit so you can see a little bit better i'm pulling that down and then just giving the elastic a tug and trying to wiggle all of the fabric downward i'm going to try and grip again i gripped a little bit too hard and it looks like i put a hole in it so I'm gonna try not gripping quite so hard this time. And I think jewelry pliers, 
<laughs> would probably be a better choice than these, you know, electrical pliers that I pulled out of the barn. It's just really whatever you got on hand. Whatever you got will work. There we go. Now I can, once you get the tip of the needle out, that's really great because then you can really grip hard with the pliers and really make the fabric, manipulate the fabric with more strength and get it to do what you want it to do. There we go. All right, all the way through. So I just like the legs of the pants, we're going to shift that elastic until we have the edge right in line with the edge of that fabric, just like so. Take it to the machine. I'm going to stitch over it several times, do a back stitch here. The one time that I didn't really stitch this securely, when I started to shift the elastic around, it pulled out immediately and really made me crazy and it was really hard to fix it. So just going ahead and do several layers of thread right there, go back and forth a few times just to make sure it's 100% reinforced and solid. Okay, so I have my piece marked on this side and it's almost exactly perfect. Line that up, make sure that the fabric didn't get tucked inside out or anything. Line that up just like so and stitch through that the same way. Oop. I'm gonna grab my pliers to cut that. There we go. And now I'll just trim off that excess elastic and you just shimmy that around a little bit until it's nice and even. We only have one more step and you've already seen me do it. Line up the edge of those shorts or panties. Just line that up, right sides together. Let's see here, I wanna change my stitch where it's at. I'm gonna dial it over until it's at five millimeters and that's gonna give me a nice quarter inch seam allowance. And then just back up. So I'm just stitching that side seam, that last remaining side seam. And you can see just how fast this pair of panties is to stitch through. And it would be even faster, you know, you could skip the elastic on the legs and make Miss Bunny a pair of shorts. Uh, you could turn it into a drawstring. There's so many different options and so many different creative ways that you could play with this design. So there we go. That's the seam stitched. All you're gonna do from here is just run a line of zigzag stitching along that seam just to finish it and then trim it down. And there we go. That is our finished pair of Miss Bunny's panties. <laughs> So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making Miss Buddy's panties. <laughs> I know she is very happy to be properly dressed both on the outside and the underside. <laughs> so if you'd like to make yourself a Miss Bunny doll complete with a dress and cool panties, you can check out her sewing pattern at mallythemaker.com slash bunny. There you can find a tutorial on sewing Miss Bunny, sewing her dress, and three different back closures for the back of her dress as well. So I hope that you'll come and check out all of the tutorials I've shared so far and make many Miss Bunny dolls for yourself and the children in your life. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Miss Bunny and her magical adventures in the world of quilts, check out the book, Mally the Maker and the Queen in the Quilt. You can find it at all major retailers and mallythemaker.com. Until next time, Let's go quilt! <laughs>